wants to do something active okay. to kind of break over. So this is a very important question. I'm just going to repeat it so everybody will hear. He's asking what's the best tikkun for Avon Abrit? What's the best way to fix when a person chas v'shalom failed with spilling semen? The thing is like this. The first thing and most important, the person has, the person has to stop. 100%. No doubt. To stop, to close the shebel. That's it. No more. This is the first thing. It's to stop. Because when a person stops for a week, then goes back. Then three weeks. Then goes back. It's constantly bouncing up and down. You will never fix it. First and most important is not to do it ever again. That's it. That's the first and most important. The next thing that a person needs to do the Zarizal explains many different things that he needs to do. First of all, he did some type of a blemish and the person has to fast for that. The Zarizal explains the person has to do 84 fasts for every time. So times that 5,000, then you can't eat anymore. Okay? Chazal says, no, 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 no. It's not 84 times for 84 tzomot fasts for each time. It's 84 times for Nefesh Ruach and Neshama, three times, so it's only 84 times three, which is not so bad, but it's still 200 and something fasts. So that's also not so e easy. The way to do it is you redeem the fasts with money. You can fast 200 times. When I became religious, for a whole year I fasted every Monday and every Thursday. Every Monday, every Thursday for a whole year. The reason why I stopped is when I sat down with my rabbi and I told him, we were learning, and I told him, Ach, I can't wait for, for the sun to go down, I'm starving. He told me, why are you starving? I told him, because I'm fasting. He's like, fasting? Why are you fasting? I told him, because uh, I took on myself that every Monday and every Thursday I fast because of my avonot, my sins. So he told me, listen, since you're sitting in yeshiva and learning, if you're not going to learn 100%, because you're hungry, don't fast. Better to learn all day long and to concentrate on your learning than to fast. So don't, that's when I stopped fasting. But the reality is that if you want to do what the Arizal says, you do 84 tzomot fasting times 3. And the easiest way to do it is you do, redeem it with money. So let's say you don't eat the whole day. How much food costs you a day? $20? Let's say $10? Not too long ago, I was in a class and I said that. So a person says, I don't need a bagel a day. <laughs> you know, $1.50 a day. So I told him, okay, be realistic. Let's say food costs you $10 a day. You know, you eat a little piece of bread in the morning and something in the afternoon and something at night. Calculate it. Be, be fair. Say, okay, uh, $10 a day. So take 84 times, do the math, and you give the money. You redeem it with money. You don't fast. Excuse me? It's not my sale. It's no, it's not my sale. It has nothing to do with my sale. It's not a lot of money. How much? Ten, let's say $10 a day. 80 times, what is it? $800. Big deal. Times that three. Let's say $3,000, you close the deal. Already. Glad kosher is expensive. Okay, so you should do mehader. You do it glad kosher. He's asking what you want to do, tikkun. Trust me, you do not want to come to Shemaim and find that you missed one, one ounce on your tikkun. You don't want to. You put all your money in this world to the glad kosher. That's one thing. The next thing is that every drop that came out created one angel. You have to kill all these angels. One way of killing it, I answered the guy before, is you do vidui every day. Vidui. You know what's vidui? Ashamnu, bagannu, gazalnu. You do it in shacharit, you do it in mincha, and you do it in kirat shma Every time you bang, you kill some of them. You have to kill it. You have to annul it. This is another thing you need to do. And you do it till the day you die because you don't know how many you created. Every night. Don't miss at night. The nights are the most important ones. Kriyat Shema Lamita. Hold on. This is another thing you do. The next thing you do is that you make sure other people know not to do it. Because you don't know how much damage you did. You don't know. And you'll never know. Because the reality is, you know, just start counting all the time. You can't. And you don't know how many times, how many drops came in each time. One way of doing it is you make sure that others know not to do it. And if you save one man, you probably killed half of what you created. 
you can't do it with your mouth, then you grab the man to somebody who will explain to somebody. You can't grab that, you take your money, you buy CDs that's talking about it, you give it to men that you know. No, in this particular department, you bring somebody to a lake, you do whatever you need to do to make as many other ears hear it. Excuse me? Tikkun HaKlali is very important, but Tikkun HaKlali is exactly how it says, Klali, general. So if you can, I didn't get to that part, but if you can, you say Tikkun HaKlali every day. You say Shira Shirim every Erev every Shabbat. You read Perek, excuse me? Erev Shabbat, on Friday, on Mincha of Friday. Don't miss out. You say Perek Shira every day. You have to learn Gemara every day. You have to learn Zohar and Hasidut every day. This is the damage, I didn't get to that before, because first you have, you have a few types of damages in Avon Abrit. The first damage is that you brought to the world all sorts of mashchitim. You have to kill it. It's your responsibility. I brought demons into the world. I have to go now and kill them. How do I kill them? I said before, you, the fasting, okay, you redeem with money. You do all the confessions, you kill them. You pay the money, you kill it. Then you did a damage in the spiritual level. You did a damage to your neshama. The neshama got damaged here. That's when you do tikkun akleli. You do shira shirim every erev Shabbat. If you would know the power of shira shirim every erev Shabbat, you would not miss it ever again. Excuse me? Listening to shira shirim? No, you have to say it with your mouth. You have to read it. You have to pronounce the word with your mouth. And don't talk from the beginning till the end. It's not like Tehillim or you're reading something you can talk in between the Prakim. You read from the beginning, Shira Shirim Asher Lishlomo, till the end. Takes you 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Read every word like as if you are polishing diamonds. Shira Shirim on Erev Shabbat is massively powerful. Don't listen to it. Don't read it with your eyes. Say it with your words and say it loud. And say that every word that I'm saying you're literally cleaning all this dirt. If you have the opportunity, read Perek Shira every day. You know what's Perek Shira? With all the animals? Read it. Takes another five minutes a day. It's also very, very powerful. Why did I say before to learn Gemara? When a person damages the breed, the sperm comes from the brain. Every time a person does it, he creates a crack in the brain, a scratch on the brain. And the only way to fix it is when you toil, you're trying to, you, you break your mind on the sugiyah of the Gemara, that fixes the damage. You have to learn Pnimiut Torah, you have to learn Hasidut and Zohar, because Hasidut and Zohar and Kabbalah is called Mokhin. When you learn the, what's called the Mokhin, you fix the Mokhin. You did the damage and you're also on your brain. There's many other different things, but start with what I told you now. You'll, you, 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 it's not easy. And uh, with the <coughs> donating money, like, of course but the thing is that when you donate to CDs it's one of the biggest mitzvot you can do because I also have CDs I have the same idea if you buy from me now a CD and you give it out and somebody looked at it and became religious all his mitzvot you get a piece of it not too long ago I have you know for my own story I have also in the last Three years, we gave out like maybe 300,000 CDs. Hundreds and thousands of people became religious. This one woman called me a year ago. She told me, you don't know me, but somebody gave me your CD. A year ago. And besides collecting dust on the wall, on the, on the shelf, it didn't do anything. A year later, I put the CD in the, in the DVD. I saw your movie. And I wanted to tell you now that today I started covering my hair. <coughs> and my kids are in yeshiva and everything. And last year I went to Israel for a, a round of, of uh, lectures. I saw the woman, a 100% religious woman. The woman who gave her the CD that invested the dollar. All her mitzvot and her kids mitzvot and her kids mitzvot. He has a piece of it. You know the MLM companies? That's, that's, that's why it's one of the greatest mitzvot to do kiruv. You can't do kiruv with your mouth or your house, you do kiruv with your money. Now regarding Avon Abrit, the general kiruv is also good. 
but you want to different mainly a, a concentrate on that department so you buy you want to buy CDs of uh, Rebbe Mizrahi I don't know his all the CDs if he has a CD about Avona Brit that one buy don't buy about you know uh, keeping Shabbat you can buy that too but Dafka when you want to fix the Avona Brit then you buy stuff that has to do with the Vona Brit. You sponsor a shiur that has to do with the Vona Brit. There's a lot what to do, but you, in anything, that why, why it's so important to do Kiruv? Because you didn't only do a Vona Brit. You did Shabbat and Gizela, Gezel and stealing and this. You need ev everything. That's why Kiruv is one of the most important things to do in our generation, because you shoot to all directions. But with the one I the little that I told you now, start with that. Then, then, then we'll then come back. We'll give you more things to do. Just say it loud. So, if you don't understand it in Hebrew, take your time to learn what you read, so you will understand it, and then say it in Hebrew. No. No. The organ has no, nothing in here. What tells the man what to do is either his Yetzeratov or either his Yetzerara. That's it, not the organ. The body doesn't need anything. If you want, go ask a doctor. Well, doctors actually will not agree to that, most of them. The real doctors will tell you that it's actually not healthy for the body. The body doesn't need it. Some people tell you, you have to do it once a week to, it's good for the body. It's not good for the body. Don't believe that. What makes the man do it is either he's looking at something that's making his mind working. Mainly, mainly what makes the man do it is a very simple thing. The Baal Shem Tov explains, excuse me? The Gentile has the same thing. For the Gentile, it's not a sin, but it's not considered a nice thing. God doesn't like it when the Gentiles do it either. It's not a love, is it? There's no, no. Like, it's for a Gentile, it's no, not it's a... It's, a it's, it's not like one of the 613 things. The Zera Levatala... Even the Lishpoch Zera Levatala is one of the lavim. It's a love. It's not a... It's not a... Uh, something extra. You're not allowed to do it. But it's not in the 613. It's... it's it, it is part of the 613. Huh? Not the tour is, has nothing to do with it. Not the tour is your eyes. But even in the arayot, you can't do arayot without doing this action. You understand what I mean? You can't do it. You, it. It's part of it. What did you ask? Gentiles bring down the shamo, like Jews do. It's not exactly with Gentiles. Gentiles, uh, they don't, they're not prohibited in doing it. But it's not considered a nice act in Hashem's eyes when the Gentiles do it. They also have to be behaving the nice way. Hashem doesn't like any immorality Hashem doesn't like. But do souls come down with the No, they, w they work on a completely different system Rabbi, with non-Jews. What I started saying, because he asked me, he said, you know, if the organ does it. The Baal Shem Tov explains that in Shamaim are two chambers. Chambers of purity and chambers of impurity. In Hebrew it's called Hechalot Kedusha and Hechalot Tumah. Imagine a man sitting like this in the hospital and he has an IV and the IV goes straight into the vein. He just sits like this. And he has an IV here and an IV here. You have a two IVs. One IV is to the chamber of purity and one IV is to the chamber of impurity. If you channel yourself to the chamber of purity, the IV that's going to come, what's called hamshacha, that's going to come from, up, from above, is pure. You channel yourself to the chamber of impurity, whatever is going to come down from above is impure. So if a person channels himself to impurity, the thoughts that are going to be in his mind will be impure. So he looks at a woman, his thoughts are right away impure. That's it, very simple. A person that is pure, he looks at a woman, his mind doesn't wander to that direction. He doesn't look at her like this. It's okay, it's a woman. That's it. Why? Because the IV, the spiritual power that's coming into his mind, is fed from a pure place. That's why I said before, it's the eyes. You're looking unpure, your mind will start thinking impure. Right away your body will react unpure. 
Very simple. You wake up in the morning and you wash your hands right away. Right away. Don't even put your feet on the ground. You wash your hands. Why? You have impurity on your hand, a very strong impurity. The tuma that's on your hands in the morning, tumat bokeh, is very strong impurity. If you don't wash your hands right away, you touch your eyes like this, your eyes are impure. You put your hand in your mouth, your mouth is impure. You don't wash at all, anything you touch will be impure. That's why you wash right away. You wash your hands. Right away you start your morning with prayer. You're looking at holy letters. You read, you learn. Your mind is already fed with purity. You're going to walk in the street. You're not going to walk like that. Everything that moves, you're going to look at it. Because your mind is pure. You're not looking to... That's why Hasidut teaches you. You go to the mikveh in the morning. You pure yourself. So it's not, it has nothing to do with the organ. The organ is not controlling you. If you're going to get to a point that an organ is controlling you, you're not in a good place. The organ doesn't control you. Your mind is the, is, your mind is the boss. That's why the Zohar and Kabbalah teaches you, you have to have the mind over. Moach shalit alalev. The mind has to control the heart. Like a dog. The dog wants to bark and gra you shut it down. You have to shut it down. And one of the ways to shut it down is you learn a lot of Torah. To do the Tikkun, that's the next stage. You have to do the Tikkun. But to get to the point that you don't even reach that place, you have to have so many fences. Not to look. Not to talk. Not to mingle. That's why the parties, they're separate. The Torah didn't come to annoy you when they put the mechitza. There's no mechitza. Okay, let's mingle. How are you going to control yourself? You're not going to control yourself when you're dancing with girls. There's a mechitza. Okay, I don't see. What I don't see doesn't bother me. If a person, it's hard for him and it's bothering him, okay, you go get married. It's, everything is possible. All depends. It's all in your mind. You, want, you decide what you want to do. If now you would understand something severe that you do, you will never do it again. The problem is, I'm going to get to it in a second. I'll give you an example. Everything in the world has value. If you value something, then you react according to the value of what you think. If I'm going to give you now a sack full of sand, and I'm going to tell you, do me a favor, carry the sack. Ten minutes, just for me, okay? Half an hour. You carry the sack, the first 10 minutes, okay, it's a little bit heavy. After 10 minutes, it's already very heavy. After 10 minutes, you can't even carry it. Then I come and tell you, you know what's in the sack? It's not sand. It's diamonds. And they're yours. Ooh, suddenly, it's not even heavy. You're going to be dancing. Why? Because it has value. You're going to take the sack home. You're not going to even put it down because it has value. In this world, whatever has value, you cherish. Whatever it doesn't have value, you don't care about. You have to program in your mind what is the value of you being strong. The problem is that most people in this generation, they don't value, okay, whatever, so what? What's the big deal? <laughs> Start working in your mind that it is a big deal. You're going to value the koach, the power that God gave you. You have now $15 million in your bank account. I guarantee you're not going to be writing checks and throwing them in the air. Guarantee. Because you worked hard for the money and you value it. That's why when people get an inheritance, or they win the lottery, or something like that, the money psh, disappears. There's no value. They didn't even work hard for it. They don't value how hard it was to get it. The point is that you have to understand in your mind the severity. If you understand the severity, you will not do it. That's it. Wait, he was waiting very patiently. <laughs>